Are you ready? It's going to be a very, very intense journey. Begin. What's up, everyone? And welcome to episode 111 of Frame Skip. I am Austin Eller. I've got my two buddies with me for this week's episode, starting off with the coach, Kyle Newman. How's it going, coach? Welcome to the show. What's up, man? How's it going? It's going great. You have something to say? What do you have to say? Hello. Okay. (laughs) Hi. Speaking of hello, George. Hello, George. Mac Jones Loftus, are we still rolling with Mac Jones this year? Where are we at, George? Update us. Yeah, the Patriots are not good, but you can't just quit on your team because they're not good. That's not it's not a very good, you know, support system for them. So yeah, they're not they're garbage this year, and that's okay. It's okay, George Mac Jones. That's me. Well, that's that's very good, Coach. How are you feeling about the Cowboys this year? We got to get get that update in because I know the world wants to know. So. Um, my son has surprised me with tickets on Sunday because I was up there for training for reserves, army reserves. So I met them down because I was at the unit. So I met them down in Arlington and I knew before the season, I picked us to drop the first two games. So I was going into this like, okay, there's a good chance we're going to lose, but Hey, Brady's been having issues, personal issues. So who knows what we get, right? But I don't know, man. When when you lose Amari Cooper, when you lose Cedric Wilson, when you lose two offensive linemen and you don't replace them, your team is going to perform much worse. But our stupid owner says that we have a better shot at getting to the Super Bowl this year than last year, which is a bunch of crap. Yeah, you guys like scored the most points in the NFL last year. I don't see you scoring the most points in the NFL this year. And that was before Dak Prescott broke his thumb. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to ask because I saw these videos and I just as someone who was at this game, I need to know, is it true that people started booing when Dak went down? No, not when he went down because Okay. We you it was so quick. Like you have to really be focused on him, but where they booed him twice and it was loud. When God. there was uh, <laughs> two of the many uh, three and outs, right, where he threw a bad pass. So it was just – it was an ugly game. I went into it knowing that we were probably going to lose. I just went there just, okay, this yeah, is home. Still got to have fun. Yes. So I was with my uh, son, his wife, and uh, so we ended up making it fun. But, yeah, they it was loud. They booed him. And, wow. uh, yeah. So That's it's going to be – it's going to be a fight for uh, between us, maybe New England, the Patriots, for that number one pick. Because we're not winning many games with the way that um, we, we don't utilize um, Ezekiel Elliott, which is, that's the biggest frustration for me. But anyways, this is a gaming podcast, not a football podcast. Oh, I got one last thing to say about football <laughs> before we move on. It's tough to well, like I, you know, you're an, you're a Cowboys fan. Elijah is an Eagles fan. So this is basically an NFC East podcast. NFC East is going to be so disgusting this year because the Eagles can put up points. Granted, like they played the Lions week one. So I'm trying not to like write too much into it. But with Dallas Goddard, A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith as like your receiving options, that's really good. And like Jalen Hurts can throw to these dudes who are good at getting wide open and good at like fighting for balls. Like they're pretty good at like 50, 50. And uh, yeah, I think it's just going to be an absolute rock fight in that division. Between Philadelphia and, uh, and Washington, but not Dallas. We're going to be at the bottom and the giants too. Uh, Maybe not so much the giants, but we, we play giants in two weeks on Monday night in New York and we're going to get destroyed. It's it's just going to be ugly. That's what I'm saying. Like they're going to be able to like steal wins from you guys. So that's going to yeah. elevate them. Like I think I don't know, like the wild card might come out of the east, which I I did not see coming. NFC is weird this year. NFC is looking a little little stale compared to the AFC. AFC is going to be fun to watch this year. Yes, I will say will. that. I'm looking forward to watching the AFC because this this podcast is coming out Friday, a day after it's the Chargers and the Chiefs for Thursday Night Football. Very excited for that. 
Speaking of things that are not stale, George, I need to know, what have you been playing this week? I've been playing two games. One I really enjoy, but honestly haven't played enough to have much of an opinion about it, but it's called CrossCode. It is by Rocketfish Games. It is a Super Nintendo style kind of a hell shooter, kind of an action puzzler. It is really interesting. It is really pretty. It is really weird. I'm probably like an hour and a half into that game and it's on sale right now. So if you're listening to this, I think it is still on sale for around eight bucks. Uh, cannot recommend it enough. It is, if nothing else, it's just really pretty 16 bit graphics, which uh, is very pleasing, very, very nostalgic for me. The game I played last night for three hours and thoroughly enjoyed. It's called Strange Brigade. Have you guys ever heard of this game? It sounds familiar, but I don't know if I know what it is. I've heard the name, I think. All right. Do you guys remember last year when I got absolutely obsessed with Zombie Army 4 with my my San Francisco buddies? Yes. This, for all intents and purposes, is Zombie Army 4, except it's set up to be like a 1930s Indiana Jones mummy-like adventure where you're going to cursed lands filled with zombies and demons and minotaurs and, and mummies and all this crap. And it's the exact same gameplay. It's awesome. I'm playing as like a version of Amelia Earhart. My buddy Colin is playing as a version of, I guess, like one of the American dudes from the mummy, like the weird, you know, Western one who is just all about Jim Beam and and boobs and stuff. You know, that guy. Um, It's a great game. It is so much fun to play. It is on sale for four dollars right now on the PSN. I cannot recommend it enough if you have people to play it with. This is giving me my my gaming passion back. So I'm I'm very happy to be playing this. Yeah, I've I just looked it up and just I'm glancing at some gameplay. One, it looks like a lot of fun. Two, I had no idea. So this is from the same team that did yeah. Zombie Army and Sniper Elite. That's crazy. I, I don't know how I missed that, but it looks like a lot of fun. That's good to know. So you said it's four dollars right now? Four dollars for the full game with all the DLC, with all the extra characters, wow. with like the weapon pack and stuff. It's crazy. It's awesome. It's great. It's just like a lot of like weird puzzling. I was playing with Fabio, friend of the show last night, and he like he told me he's like, I loved like the original PlayStation one, like Lara Croft Tomb Raider games. Mm -hmm. This game is the closest I've ever gotten to actually feel like I was in a tomb trying to solve a puzzle to save my life. Like it's really I don't want to say clever puzzles because I'm not like the biggest puzzle gamer. So I don't actually know like how wide the spectrum is for like quality, but it was really enjoyable. And like we sat there and we didn't brute force our way through the puzzle. We actually had to like think about it. And we refused to look it up in a guide. And it was just to get gold and treasure to upgrade our weapons and stuff. And it's just like, oh, crap, this is going to be a lot of fun. This is going to very quickly become an obsession. I'm excited because this weekend, one of my buddies, his girlfriend is out of town. So I think we're just going to do a lot of this. And also, there's no more US Open. Congratulations, Carlos Alcaraz. So Saturdays are now free. My nights are now free. I don't have to stay up until 3 o'clock in the morning watching tennis matches. Life is good. That's awesome. Uh, I will check this game out because I frankly didn't know it looked this good. So, <laughs> Oh, and you can unlock the frame rate on PlayStation 5, too. Nice. Which nice. is very, very awesome. cool. Well, I am going to skip over Coach because Coach, I know, has not been playing anything recently. But I have been playing primarily just a little bit more of Destiny 2. I know we didn't record last week, but still thoroughly enjoying that game runs so well on ps5 looking forward to to playing more of it but primarily for the past few days i still haven't spent a ton of time with it because i've been out of town but um i picked up splatoon 3 which came out on friday so a week ago at the time of this podcast publishing and it's fantastic i'm really enjoying it what i will say is it at the end of the day it is more splatoon um it's not changing the formula but there are some new additions that I'm really enjoying. I'm I'm really liking the story mode so far. They really did a lot of fun quality of life stuff that really should have been changed, you know, in the last game or even updated in the first one. Like, for example, you guys know how in Splatoon 1 and 2 and, and even in 3 to an extent, when you boot up the game every single time, it goes to that little like announcement thing where it's got the characters and they're announcing the maps that are available right now for the multiplayer. And you just sit there like waiting for them to stop talking so you can play the game. Yeah, I hated that in Splatoon one and two, and they finally changed it where it'll it'll still pull it up. It still brings it up when you when you put up the game. But at the top left, it says click the left stick 
and you click it and it just condenses all of their information into like a dialog box in the top left of the screen and you can just go on playing while they're talking which is just the best thing <laughs> so <laughs> i uh on that front i'm i'm enjoying that they've got a lot of fun stuff that they've done with um friend play now where you can actually like join your friends in a lobby and and jump into a match together instead of it being kind of Mario Kart 8-esque where your your friend joins a match and then the other friends have to go and join that match and wait for them to finish the race while they're playing with randoms. Now you can actually all go in at one time, which is awesome. And then, thank God, they changed... um, What's the like horde mode? I forget what it's called, but the the horde mode in this in the game, which they added in two, they changed it so it's available twenty four seven. Because for some reason in two, you could only access it like certain times of the day, and so they finally made it so it's like okay, you can play this when you actually want to play it instead of waiting for our schedule. So I'm really enjoying it so far. I haven't played a ton of it, but I'm looking forward to to diving in deeper into it. So I understand you say you haven't played a lot of it. So this might be a loaded question, but with all due respect to Splatoon two, it felt kind of like Splatoon one and a half, you know, it didn't feel like a full sequel. Does this feel like more of a sequel? Like, is this more in line with, with expectations so far with your, your limited access? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I think it definitely, I still wouldn't say it's totally reinventing the wheel, but it's more of a sequel than two was to one. I'd say for me, two felt like kind of just a port of one in some ways with some slight changes. 100%, but three, yeah. three definitely feels like, OK, there are actually some some major changes in this game. Um, different things like the grappling hook and other just uh, other aspects. The, the whole hub area really shocked me. It's ginormous. Like you can just walk around, you know, where you go to like your little shops and buy by gear and all that stuff it's huge and i was a little surprised by that but yeah and then as far as the single player goes that's what i've primarily played so far so i'm probably maybe three or four hours into it and i'm really enjoying it so far they really changed it up um content wise where i feel like i've gotten pretty far in it but i'm actually only on the first of like six worlds and so i don't know how long the game is but i'm gonna say it's probably at least 10 hours which is pretty good for a single player of a primarily multiplayer game. And the stories actually really grabbed me. I'm not going to spoil what happens, but there's some really interesting stuff that goes on that I'd say, even though I enjoyed the story modes in the other two games, I'm, I'm far more interested in this one. So the story, the, the, the story for two, the, the single player campaign, it, it felt like just a bunch of maps put together, right? But it was still fun. So is is it? Did they add to that? Did they? Did it feel like a story for a third person shooter? Yeah. So it's similar, where it's still a bunch of maps, but they do give you more of a reason as to what's going on. Like there's there's without spoiling too much, when you see the trailers and stuff in the game, it's pretty clear that they're like in this post apocalyptic world where you've got like the Eiffel Tower knocked over and all this weird like human stuff going on in the background, and they definitely go way more into that this time so at the end of the day the actual mechanics like yeah they are kind of still just random levels like they're still the same like kettle pot things that you kind of melt into and that's what starts the level but i'd say the actual plot i'm finding much more intriguing this time around like i actually really want to know what's going on whereas in one and two it kind of felt more i still like those stories but they felt more like tutorials right so what's good about this series is you can tell the developers and everybody that's involved love the series. Like you can tell they have fun, you know, um, same way with the uh, with those that are working on that worked on Breath of the Wild when that game was released. Same with uh, God of War, the, the most recent God of War. Right. You could tell when you actually get to see these developers, how much they love what they're doing. And I've always had that. I've always had a sense of that with the guys that are uh, working on Splatoon, the series. Yeah, and I love their support of it, too. It's I want to say I don't know if it's the same team anymore, but I know it started off kind of with the same team as Animal Crossing. 
And so I love how they support the game too. You know, they they go on adding DLC and Splatfests and all that stuff for several years after. So I love that they're dedicated to the game. And one thing I will say, and, and George, I know you have something as well, but the one thing I will say is just on a news standpoint, they announced that this was the highest or the fastest selling game of all time in Japan. Not just Nintendo game, like of all games, which is insane to me. So while it's pretty big in the West, I think it's it's much bigger in Japan than people realize. And so it's, it's more it's than just, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yes, it sold like literally double that in the same amount what? of time. It, it sold three and a half million copies in Japan in three days. Whoa. Yeah. So it it like drastically outpaced the, the previous number one. So and again, that's just the fastest selling in opening weekend, I guess it would be. But still insane numbers so crazy to crazy to see it sell that well but i'm i'm happy for that team and excited to play more so george what have you got i was wondering like it kind of seemed like for a while that like video games were solved right like it, it felt like okay this is the best way to do a first person shooter okay this is the best way to do a third person shooter this is how we should do stealth you know this is like the ideal stealth game and then Nintendo shows up and completely reinvents the concept of like what actually makes success in a third person shooter game. Right. And they did that one because they're geniuses and they did that too, because they didn't want like a violent game, but they wanted like the, the sensations of playing those violent games. Right. So like, I'm wondering boys, what genre that Nintendo is not known for, would you want them to take on next? Ooh, man. That's a really good question. You know, they they've hit some stuff here and there. They've kind of hit the sports genre mm-hmm. with their their Mario games. I'm trying to think of what 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 could they hit that they haven't really done. I think it would be different, but I'd be curious to see them do like a survival horror type thing. I mean, I know they tried that a little bit with Luigi's Mansion in a way, but right. Maybe not like horror per se, but I think it'd be interesting to see some sort of Metroid style game in that vein or something of that sort. I could mess with that. That sounds fun. Or or just a new IP. <laughs> or just a new IP. <laughs> yeah. New IP, possibly like um for their own with you know with their characters a strategy RPG possibly. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. Like we don't actually talk about this that much on the show, but like I love real time strategy games. Like Yeah. Starcraft was probably like my most played video game as a child. And then like when Starcraft 2 came out, I just didn't do anything for that entire summer. Like I was bar- it was barely running on like my old 16 inch like MacBook Pro that I bought in 2007. And I think Starcraft 2 actually killed that computer, to be completely honest. But it, man, what a way to go, you know? And so, man, just seeing like the Nintendo stamp on like resource management on you know unit creation on actual strategy damn that would be sick i know we're getting like XCOM adjacent stuff with with mario rabbits and that's cool and all i'm not super into like the tactics stuff to be completely honest like i think there's the something about that intimacy just like makes me a little uncomfortable like i'm actually sending people to die whereas like when i'm playing a real-time strategy game it feels more like i'm smashing toys together if that makes sense Right, like in StarCraft, like oh crap, I've got forty Marines. I could never afford this many GI Joes. Like I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for broke here. And man, just seeing a whole bunch of Toads go up against a whole bunch of Koopas that that could be a lot of fun. You know, one one Donkey Kong just sort of like rolling through, (laughs) being the tank. That's a wonderful idea. Wonderful idea. So, well, speaking of nintendo and by the way i do hope to have more thoughts on splatoon as we continue forward with the show i'm i'm hoping to play some more of the the multiplayer which i haven't had a ton of time with so looking forward to chatting more about that but um on the topic of nintendo we have two big things to talk about this week we had both a nintendo direct and playstation state of play on the same day which might be a first i don't know if that's happened before i'm i'm unsure but both were pretty decent the nintendo direct was about 40 minutes maybe a little bit longer and then the state of play was about 20 minutes and both had some good stuff to show so just wanted to kind of walk through both of those and give our thoughts and reactions overall to both of those 
um, showcases. So we'll start with the direct since that one happened earlier in the day. And um, I, I think overall, maybe we should start with just our, our big opinions, what we thought about the direct, if you guys want to go that way and um, just kind of our, our overall reactions to what they announced. And then we can run through some of the big, big titles and big games that they ran through. So what did you guys think of this Nintendo Direct overall? I liked it. I thought there was a lot of remakes. I thought there was a lot of ports. And I thought there was a lot of farm sim. Those were like the th- my three big takeaways. I got really excited about those ports and remakes. Though. So like, I don't want to seem like upset about the amount of them. Like, I'm really looking forward. Can I spoil some of the games that were that were mentioned? Yes. I'm really looking forward to like the Front Mission trilogy coming out because as far as I know, Front Mission 1 and 2 have never come to the States, right? Like I feel like on PlayStation 3, the only one you could buy was Front Mission 3. So I'm excited to like really jump into that series. You guys know I'm a huge Gundam fan, so anything with giant robots has my attention. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Kirby's Return to Dreamland because I just don't want to play my Wii. And that game is on my list of, of Kirby games to check out. I'm going through something of a Kirby renaissance uh, behind the scenes, which uh, I will talk about eventually on the show. I'm trying to play through a bunch of those games. And um, yeah, it's just other things like, oh, Radiant Silver Gun. Sure, yeah, why why, why not have that game on Switch? That makes perfect sense. That, that might as well be here. There's some really exciting stuff that I don't want to spoil. Like, I'm excited for those games, but also it's just... What I appreciate about this show was that like all this stuff is coming out in the next like five months. Yep. Sony, Sony, you should take notes (laughs) (laughs) about the games you show. Yes. Uh, Coach, what did you think? I thought it was a decent, I thought it was a good direct. You know, there was some, uh, besides all the rumors and leaks that everybody was like salivating over. Like her Twilight Princess. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, Metroid Prime. <laughs> so I saw, I saw one about Eternal Darkness, and I was like, "Dude, no way!" Just in time for Halloween, I let I, I'm an idiot. I let myself get but like buy into the hype. I'm so dumb every year. Yeah, I will say this: they do need to get some GameCube games on their uh, on their and like fast because they showed that with uh, Mario Sunshine, they can do it. You know, so but anyways, okay. To the direct, I really enjoyed um, uh, going back and looking at the Kirby and looking at the difference between uh, the Wii version and the the Switch version. Um, I, I mean, it, it'd be good to play both, right? Because they both still look good, you know. Yeah. Um, the the Fatal Frame game, that game is the one that uh, released in Japan and I want to say Europe because. No, I don't even think it went to Europe. I think it was just Japan. And that's the one, that's the game that I modded my Wii for. Someone made a patch, an English patch. So, but that's cool that it's coming. So now you have two uh, Fatal Frame games, the, basically the last two, right? Um, and then Octopath 2, right? That's, they showed a little, well, I, didn't, I don't know how much they showed, but Crisis Core, Final yeah. Fantasy, right? And then, uh, of course, the um, the new Zelda, right? We got a, t- a title for it. So <laughs> that was that was the to me that was the best thing is is being able yeah. to see them push out a little bit more information. And we're getting close. It was May, end of May. No, May twelfth. Yeah, May twelfth. So yep. we still got um, a, what about eight months or so until that comes out. So. That's plenty of time to go through Breath of the Wild and <laughs> Age of Calamity again before. Yeah. yeah. So there was all these rumors that like, oh, it's going to be Ma- not Majora's Mask. It's going to be tw- uh, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. Coach, what what's like the bigger feeling for you, Austin, you too, because you really like Breath of the Wild. Are you more excited that Breath of the Wild 2 has like a release date or are you more upset that you're not getting Majora's Mask. Oh, God, why am I always doing that? The other two on on Switch. Oh, I'm far more excited for for. I don't even remember what it's called. Uh, Tears, Tears of, of the, the Kingdom. F- yeah, I'm far more excited for that, and just knowing that there's a release date. I mean, I do still really wish that those two games were on Switch. But at the end of the day, and I know this doesn't apply to everybody, 
but my Wii U is still plugged in. So if I really want to play those games, I still can. But um, you know, I mean, I'm, we're, I'm more we're coming up on the 40th anniversary of Zelda. So any right, like 1985, 1986. Right. So maybe maybe some year we'll get to play those games. Yeah, we'll chat about it later. But I think it's interesting what they're doing on Kirby's 30th anniversary compared to. 35 years of Zelda last year. So yeah. <laughs> Kirby's getting so much love on the switch. It's awesome. Yeah. Right. Um, but overall for me, and then we'll dive into the games themselves. I really love this direct. I thought it had some of the best games that they've ever shown in such a short amount of time. Like I, there weren't any like major huge hitters overall, but I thought that there was some stuff here that just nonstop, you know, I was interested in the majority of what they they showed, so I'm I was very happy with this direct. I, I still do wish, and maybe it's just like feeding into the hype, but I I do still wish that they had announced Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. But that would be my only like dream announcement that that could have been there. So, um, but let's kind of run through each game. If you guys have one that you're more interested in, stop me. I don't necessarily want to talk about all of them because I'm I'm not super interested in every single game, but there are certain big ones for sure, such as the very first game they showed, Fire Emblem Engage. Which, good lord, I was not expecting that at all. And I don't know why, because Three Houses has been out for five years at this point, four years. You know, so. what's, it's, you know what's interesting is I was looking at some of the comments and a lot of people are like they're they're saying it's it's more like the the app the heroes mobile yeah so it'll be yeah. interesting to see how this game plays once we see more of it right yeah and i kind of get that comparison because in heroes you could have like your old fire emblem characters in your party so like they kind of it was like the Hyrule Warriors of Fire Emblem, basically, where like everybody from the old games came together. But it looks like they're maybe doing that a little bit with this one. But I thought overall it looked fantastic. I love the colors and just the bright nature of the game. I don't know how to feel about the name per se, <laughs> but I am excited for it for sure. Do you think it's going to be as big as Three Houses? I will say, if there's one thing I would change, I, I would hope it's not 300 hours like that game is. <laughs> so more along the line of like Awakening, right? Yes, yes. I would much prefer like a solid 40, 50 hour Fire Emblem game. I'm excited. I couldn't get into Three Houses. I was honest, I was way more into Awakening. And this looked like a little bit smaller scale, right? Like it looked, it was like a little less... I don't mean this disrespectfully. I just mean this was like shorthand, like just like a little less like dramatic yeah, uh, than three houses and just like a little less intimate and like a little less personal, which like I like those parts of Awakening, but it felt like for a mobile game specifically, it was designed to be brief in a way that I just found kind of exhausting on on Switch. So I'm excited just because yeah. it looks yeah more more compact. Agreed. And I did feel that same way with three houses. I played about 15 hours and I do want to go back to it at some point, but even in that first 15 hours, I felt like not much happened story wise. Like it was just a garbage load of exposition, just too much. So 100%. I'm, I'm hoping this one's a little more condensed. Um, it takes two. They announced for the switch. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to see that game coming out. It was of course the um, game awards game of the year last year. A really good be, game. Curious, be curious to see how it runs since it's not on a PS five. So, <laughs> um, Coach, you mentioned this one earlier, Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, which I want to say had a different title in Japanese. I don't think it was called Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, although I might be wrong. But uh, like you said, Coach, this is 4, which was originally on the Wii and it was Japanese only. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are excited for this game. Yeah, this feels like an Elijah game. It very much is. And I know he was very excited to to see it show up. So I've never really played too much of the Fatal Frame series. I played a little bit of the first one, and I actually have the Japanese copy of 4, which Coach sent me at one point. Um, but I haven't played um, 5, the, the newest one that was on Wii U that they ported. So fun series to jump into at some point. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, they showed some of the next expansion for that on the way. A um, few other games that 
had kind of been announced previously. SpongeBob SquarePants Cosmic Shake, which actually looks pretty dang good. It looks so pretty. And like maybe I'm just like biased because uh big battle for bikini bottom or whatever was just like the PlayStation Plus game, like the rehydrated yeah. edition. Maybe I was just like, oh, this is as good as SpongeBob could ever look. And then this game comes I'm like, oh, that's like actually like really good animation that that's yeah. like really good art direction. I hope it's good. I miss that like old kind of double A type game, the THQ style stuff, and it, it does look pretty enjoyable. Um, you know, you know what's funny is when I was in basic training in 20, 20, or 2003, that game came out on, or the, I think the first SpongeBob game came out on the Game Boy Advance. And a lot of soldiers were playing that, believe it or not. You know, because the SP... A lot of those games were good. Yes. And at first I'm like, SpongeBob, yeah, right. But then, like, it had a good following. Like, there was people that really enjoyed, not just kids, but, you know, uh, young adults, you know, in their 20s playing that game, like, and they were having a blast with it. Next up, they announced, which this was insane to me, Fitness Boxing Fist of the North Star, which I uh, would have never expected to be a thing. So... There's that Oddballers. I can't even remember what that was, to be honest. Do either of you remember Oddballers? Yeah, that was like the Ubisoft party game that looked like it was trying to eat some of uh, Fall Guys uh, lunch. I do remember this. Yeah, it was like a dodgeball, like overcooked camera angle looking game. Yeah. Tunic, they announced is coming to Switch. Another game I need to play at some point. I've heard that game is phenomenal. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's hard. And uh, <laughs> it sure is hard. <laughs> yeah. And then, George, you mentioned these earlier. Front Mission 1, 2, and 3. Front Mission 1 is November. Front Mission 2 will be next year. And then Front Mission 3, which I want to say they actually announced here. So 1 and 2 had already been announced, the remakes. But 3, I think this was the first time they've ever mentioned that. Um, that is a to-be-determined date. But cool to see all those on the way. And, man, just give me more mech games. I the more we get, the better. <laughs> yeah. um, Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life. This was a really cool announcement. I know a lot of people loved Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life on GameCube, and this is a remake of that. So cool to see that on the way. Another big game here, Octopath Traveler 2. Very, very good trailer. I have never played Octopath Traveler, but this trailer got me so hyped. That engine and those graphics are just for that, you know, for that style of game is just second to none, right? You could only imagine like um, an older SNES RPG being remade, or maybe even the Mario and Luigi, like the first one being remade using that engine, those graphics. It would just be phenomenal. Coach, gun to your head, which art direction do you like more? The Octopath 2 and Octopath or the uh, Link's Awakening like toy diorama art direction? I'll take Octopath. Octopath? Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting to see Square kind of rolling with that art style because, of course, they did Triangle Strategy and then mm-hmm. um, what is it? Live Alive? Live Alive? They did the same kind of art style. And I, I mm-hmm. love... Yeah, it's pretty similar. It's got that like pixelated 3D kind of style. And I love that style. So the more we get to that, the better. (laughs) And the bosses, you know, they're like three, four times bigger than you. And they just, you know, they have depth. And it just looks really cool. Because I played about, I got about 10 hours into it, right? And uh, it's just, it looks so good. Or the first Octopath Traveler, right? Just looks so good and plays so good. And then they announced Fay Farm, which, like you said earlier, George, there were many farming games announced. This was the second one after Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life, and there are several more. So, um, Theater Rhythm, Final Bar Line, which is the next in like the Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm game series. I'm excited for that one. Some really good rhythm games. And they announced this one's going to have music from Nier and a few other titles, too. I think Octopath is also in it. So some pretty, pretty neat stuff there. 
Um, they showed more gameplay for Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope. Are either of you guys excited for this? Yeah, game? I was about to say, do you guys care? I just, I just don't care. You know, the thing about the first title is it's cool to play it first, but then it just like wears on you. Like, okay, I played enough of this game to know what it's like, and I just didn't care to see it to the end. Did I have fun at the beginning? Yes. Did it look amazing? Yeah, it had that uh, Luigi's Mansion 3 type of um, detail to it for a Switch game. But it just got, it's a good game, but it's just drastically long for me, like 20-something hours, I think. And I've heard it's really good. I have a copy of it, but I've never played it. What I will say is I feel like this is a little late to the party. Like everybody was talking about Mario and Rabbids and how surprisingly good it was when it came out. But this is five years later. Another thing, too, is like most of the people I know who bought Mario Rabbids, they bought it because it was constantly on sale for like 15 bucks or like 12 bucks. And so it's like, dude, for 12 or 15 bucks, that's an amazing game for 60. I don't, I don't know, man. It's not really, it's, it's a lot of money for a Rapids game. And then they announced uh, Rune Factory 3 Special, some new Rune Fa- Factory series games as well coming in the future. And then they went into some of the N64 stuff, which I thought was interesting. They announced Pilot Wing 64, Mario Party, Mario Party 2, Mario Party 3, Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. 1080 snow, snowboard, snowboarding, Excite Bike 64, and then GoldenEye are all coming to the N64 online stuff. What did you guys think overall of this announcement? I don't care about that first pack of games nearly as much as I care about that next one. Like, Excite Bite 64, honestly, underrated game. That game does not get brought up enough when people talk about excellent things to do on the N64. Also, 1080. What a time and place game, but Jesus, what a cool time and place it was referencing, man. Like that, that menu music alone is like, it's, it's just so triggering for me in a good way. Like whenever I hear it, cause I actually, I have 1080 on my, on my Wii U through virtual console. Uh, so I'll actually like play that game a few times a month, you know, like not, not anything major, but most of the time I just listen to the menu music. It's just really satisfying, man. Yeah, I gotta agree. The um, the, uh, the Excite Bike sixty four. I remember I rented that, and I was just it was it was such a fun game to play, and the controls were good, the tracks were good, and it's just it's very underrated. So I have to agree with George on that one. But I wasn't too thrilled about the the titles. I guess um, Excite Bike and then Golden Eye, right? Yeah, I thought there were some odd choices here. I mean, all these make sense, but I was kind of hoping for like a little bit more than this. Um, I mean, What's it's so. Yeah, I guess that's the real question. That's true. That's a good point. Um, but I mean, Mario Party. I mean, I'm excited that all three are coming, but we've got the new one that came out recently that's got the old levels and stuff in it that's all modernized. And um, I was talking to Coach. I never played these games, but Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, I thought kind of the purpose of those games was to link up with the Game Boy cartridges, or am I mistaken? There's a story mode to it also where it's like kind of a gauntlet where you need to basically just like build the correct team. It's more, it feels more like a puzzle game to be completely honest. There's this one YouTube channel I've been getting I want to say into, but like having on in the background I, I will look up his name right now, but like he's just like his goal is to just like play through every single Nintendo 64 game. And he played through Pokemon Stadium and I watched it because like those videos were like 35 minutes long. And I was like, wait, 35 minutes for you to do like a summary of you playing through those games that had nothing to it. How is that possible? And he he broke down the story mode, which like I didn't know existed because I honestly just use that game as an excuse like to play my Game Boy games like through like the transfer pack on my TV because I thought that was like the coolest thing in the world. Interesting. And then, I, I mean, I think GoldenEye is cool. Um, what I will say is I don't know how well it's going to hold up. Like, I don't know if people are actually going to want to play this game in 2022, to be honest with you. When well, was the last um, time you guys played it? I don't even know. It's been ages. 2016 for me. Yeah, Really? It's been yeah, a while for me. A not, long while. It's not great. Yeah. 
The other thing I will say about this, and this isn't so much a Nintendo problem, but they announced that this is going to have online play on the Switch. It's also coming to the Xbox consoles, and they announced that those would not have online play, which is bizarre. So <laughs> just wanted to point that out. <laughs> um, a few other uh, titles kind of to run through various day life, which might have one of the worst video game titles I've ever seen. Uh, another another farming game from Square Enix. And uh, has the same exact font as Octopath Traveler Triangle Strategy. I thought that was weird. Was choice. That was a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Factorio. Don't really remember that one, to be honest. Ib. Um, they announced some new stuff coming to Mario Strikers, including um, Paulina and um, Diddy Kong. And then Atelier Ryza 3 which, honestly, I don't know a whole lot about that franchise. They announced that's coming to the Switch. I feel like that's going to be Seth's next franchise that he gets really into once he wraps up uh, Brave Sword, or what's that yes. game he gets really into? The Tales of the Cold Steel, or whatever it is. Yes, the Cold Steel, yeah. Once he wraps that up, he's probably going to be like, well, I guess I'll just play every single Atelier game. Yes. Um, and then they, they showed off a little bit of the next wave of Mario Kart 8 DLC, which I thought was odd. This was a very strange announcement because they showed two courses of the eight. Yeah, and they were both from like the mobile version, which like, I'm sorry, historically like the worst courses that they've introduced to to Mario. Like, I almost want I want there to be like a shuffle mode for these courses. And I, if I just want to turn off anything from Mario Kart Tour because those levels are not good. There's like I think the Paris level is maybe the best one just because like each time you do like a, a loop on the track, like it's slightly different. But everything else, it's just it's just so boring and vanilla. And then um, they talked about golf being released in Nintendo Switch Sports, which it, whenever that releases, that's probably when I'll get that game because that's my favorite sport in Wii sports. Yeah. I've heard that before. <laughs> and then speaking of, uh, the biggest tease of all time that didn't really go too far. Uh, Miyamoto comes out and he's like, well, you guys know we're doing the Mario movie. And I'm like, okay, show us the trailer. He didn't show us the trailer. And then he's like, all right, we're also doing super Mario world at universal studios. And that's opening next year. And then he goes, by the way, Pikmin, and he shows us five minutes of Pikmin Bloom, which has been out for two years, which was the strangest thing I've ever seen. He didn't show anything new about Pikmin Bloom. It was just, hey, by the way, this game exists and uh, nobody's playing it. So we need more people to play it. Here's a reminder. That's a thing. And then he showed us 30 seconds of Pikmin 4. <laughs> so that was a very odd segment. <laughs> Did you manifest Pikmin 4? Because we were talking about that pretty recently, right? Like we were saying how like that game has just been done and just like in a drawer right, waiting we for like, the right moment, it. right? Yeah. Because Miyamoto know. himself came out and said, Pikmin 4 is all but done. Yeah. And that was before. And that was before. He said that before the 3DS title was released. Yes. What was the name of that one? Uh, was it Hey Pikmin? I think yes. that's what it was called. It got beat up by everybody. Yeah. It yeah. got beat up. Didn't I, I feel like I've seen Scott the Waz flush that game down the toilet several times. <laughs> <laughs> Probably that and um, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival for Wii U, which everybody loved too. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember. The, I remember that YouTube channel I was talking about earlier. It's called The Beast with a with an A instead of an E for the. And he's honestly he's like a speedrunner for like mario levels like for mario maker levels and that's like mostly what he does and then he, he'll do like a weekly n64 summary it's fun it's nice to have on in the background while i'm working so very good um on the topic of pikmin 4 i mean they didn't really show much of anything aside from one little screenshot that was like oh by the way it's going to be a lower kind of over the shoulder camera all i can say is i'm really looking forward to it i mean i love pikmin but i thought this was a very odd announcement. <laughs> Sure so. was. They talked about Harvestella, Square Enix, kind of another farming type game, which had been previously announced. A demo is out for that now. Bayonetta 3, they showed more gameplay for. It comes out soon, October 28th, only a little over a month away. Are either of you guys getting that game? I'm not the biggest third person action game guy. 
maybe when it drops in price, right? Yeah. It'll be, because that's not a first party game. So it's not Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. That's <laughs> $60, right? Oh, I finally bought that game for $25 off eBay. So nice. pretty excited nice. to cross that one off the list. Badass game. You're going to love it. Hard as hell, but it's so worth it to beat it. <laughs> Have you played it before, George? No. Oh, man. That's like one of the best platforming games of all time. I haven't played the original since it came out on Wii. My my buddy Ben is like super into Donkey Kong, and he bought that like day one and invited me over. And we tried swapping the controller back and forth, and he's like, "You know what? Like, just let me do it." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> sounds good." They also showed off Master Detectives Archives Rain Code, which I'm re- really looking forward to. That's by the same team that made the Danganronpa series, so I'm looking forward to that. They talked about how. Which I'm surprised this is a, still a thing. They the Resident Evil franchise, um, the remakes of two, three, and then seven and eight are all coming to Switch in cloud format. Which still need to try that out. I'd love to know how that actually plays. Not convinced. Me neither. <laughs> Sifu is coming to Switch. I know a lot of people talked about that game, kind of a, a brawler kung fu style game, supposedly very hard. Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII Reunion, they showed off. Of course, that remake of Crisis Core. And man, that game looks so good. What system are you going to get it on? If I get it, which I probably won't get it at launch, but whenever I get it, I would probably still get it on, on PS5. But uh, You'll think it they'll does have like updated game. graphics for it? Yeah, I'd say it'll probably be a higher resolution or something. Probably but it better. looks fantastic. So, uh, George, you mentioned this one earlier, Radiant Silver Gun, which is now available. Yeah. Do you guys like bullet hell shooters? Yes, very much so. Oh, really? Very much. Okay. Yeah. I haven't played one recently. It's been a while, but I, I love, love, love bullet hell games. Um, Endless Dungeon. I don't even remember that one, to be honest with you. Don't know if you guys care about that. Third, three player, you know what's it called when the level's different every time oh like rogue roguelite yeah uh procedurally generated sorry that was the phrase i was i was i was misplaced it it looks fine like i like the art direction but like the gameplay just looks a little a little slow for me plus like i i just don't know how many more of those we need in our lives to be honest like that's probably the like one of the most oversaturated genres at this point right oh i'd say so for sure yeah for sure what was um, that one that got a lot of love in like maybe 12, 13? Was it Rogue Planet? No, not Rogue Planet. What was it called? It was it was the one where you would die. And when you died, it's like you transformed. You would go to know. your you would go to like different generations of your family, right? Oh, Rogue died. Legacy. Yeah, Rogue Legacy. That was, I think, one of the biggest ones, right? Or that was one of the early early games that came out where it was procedurally generated. Yeah. And that was huge. Cause I think that like launched on PlayStation plus too. Like that was like just a new game that was also free, you know, not free, but like came with membership, which was a big deal at the time. But like, I mean, honestly, like I haven't even played Hades yet. I've been playing a lot of children of Morta lately, which I really enjoy, but like, I, I feel like Hades, not that like you can't make a game better than Hades, but like there's just so many of these games now, man. Like you really got to do something special to stand out. Yeah, well, and that's why I feel like Hades did stand out, but it's kind of hard to get away from that now. Hades yeah. is so good, and frankly, I haven't really played any other ones that have been of that caliber. Uh, Tales of Symphonia Remastered. This I was excited for at first, and then I heard that they are still having the same issue they had with the last port, which is it's still only 30 frames per second on everything, which doesn't make sense to me because the original GameCube version was 60 frames per second. So let me ask you this. Are they using the PS3 version or are they remastering the GameCube version? It sounds like they're using whatever the PS3 version was because that was also 30 frames per second which was the issue everybody had with that one. So I thought this was 
interesting until I found that out. <laughs> I just remember a lot of controversy. I didn't know it was the 30 frames per second. I just thought it was, I just heard people say it was a bad remaster. Yeah, which is weird too, because they did um, Tales of Vesperia, which was the 360 exclusive Tales game. Mm-hmm. They remastered that for a Switch, and that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what what went wrong with that. And then they had some quick fire games here at the end. Life is Strange, Arcadia Bay Collection coming to Switch, um, Romancing Saga, Lego Brick Tales, Disney Speed Storm, Fall Guy Season 2. All, all interesting stuff. Nothing really I'm crazy excited for. And then, frankly, for me, the big two announcements of the show were Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, which comes out February 24th. You guys excited for that game? I've never played that game. It's a Wii, Wii game originally, and it looks fantastic on the Switch. They kind of changed the art style a little bit. It's got like that cell shaded yeah, look a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I love how it looks. So that's a day one purchase for me. When, when it was popular to go game hunting and all that stuff, that game on the Wii was pretty expensive. That stayed right at about fifty to sixty dollars. Like, so it it kept its value. Let's put it that way. I grabbed mine in twenty nineteen. I think I got it for forty dollars. Like that was like one of the last Wii games I remember buying at at GameSpot, GameStop. Uh, like there was a really big GameStop location right on, um, Market Street in San Francisco, which is like, you know, like the big financial district, and it was five blocks away from IGN and, you know, three blocks away from, from GameSpot and whatnot. So like whenever you listen to a podcast and they were talking about like going to GameSpot for like their midnight launch, like that was usually the one they were talking about. And uh, yeah, that was like one of the, it was like that and like Sonic Colors and Legend of the Seven Rings. Those were like the last three Wii games. I think I will ever buy at a GameSpot probably. You don't want to pick up all the shovelware? I would honestly like I I never owned carnival games. I would I wish I did. That's hilarious. Oh my god. You know, I was this is totally off the wall, but I was thinking the other day I never played Endless Ocean. And I always wanted to pl- try that game. I was always so curious. I got that and Endless Ocean too. I used to like I would get paid like direct deposit every Thursday and that was like the day before that was the day of like my pub trivia. So I'd always like leave work early, go to the GameStop buy like three Wii games just because I knew I'm like, well, pretty soon, like these aren't going to be here. Like the shelf is getting smaller every week. So I was just like justifying like, okay, like I really want these games. And like the next week I'd be like, okay, these games seem okay. And then like by the end, it was just like, kind of want this just for like archival purposes, but like, I don't know how much I'm ever going to play this game. Uh, But return to return to dreamland was like one of the first ones I bought. And that game is great. Yeah. The one thing I will say, because I've never played it, I really hope at some point they go back to this and they showed it in the trailer where every person that's playing co-op can just be a different color Kirby. Mm -hmm. Because that's why I really fell off Forgotten Land was Andy and I were trying to play it. But one person could be the cool ass Kirby with all the power ups and the other person had to just be this standard Waddle D that had a stick. And that was all they could be. Yeah, it's pretty. And like there are different color Kirby's. Just let everybody be Kirby. It doesn't matter plot wise. It does not matter that there are multiple Kirby's. Yeah. <laughs> How did the development team think that that was okay when it came up? Right. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about our couch co-op. So <laughs> let's give them the weakest amount of, <laughs> you know, weapons yeah. and they can't do anything and they just follow along like a, a puppy dog. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, I don't know. Sometimes it's funny. When and I'm sure they're trying to make it accessible for families, but to an extent, I don't know. Just let, let the kids play as Kirby. Right. <laughs> yeah, for real. So, and then the last announcement, they showed off a, a brief little trailer, but primarily the name drop and release date for Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which of course was Breath of the Wild 2. That'll be releasing February or uh, May 15th or May 13th, rather, 2023. So very brief little trailer. They really didn't show a whole lot of gameplay, but what they did show looked good. I'm excited for the the date or for the game to come out. I'm still not sure how to feel about the the uh, name. It seems a little long for me. <laughs> but this is like three years and eleven months after they announced it. Yep, it's been a long time. And I'm fine with time. that. I'm fine with that because 
Um, it's going to be, I think it's just going to be that special game. I think they're, they're going to put everything into it instead of rushing it. Um, it's going to be good. Now what's missing from that direct, which is so funny. I think every time is Metroid prime four. Yes. Like where the hell is that game? Right. We know nothing about it. When did they announce it? When did we get the little oh, Lord. four? 2017. Yeah. Was it the first year of the the Switch? Is I think it was. It? I remember yeah. I was at uh, this PR agency called, I'm not actually not going to say the name of it, uh, but I was an intern there. And I remember like going into work on E3 and I was just like, God, I don't want to be here. I just want to be home watching the conferences. And then I realized I was an intern and no one cared what I did. So I just watched the conferences uh, from my laptop at, at work and. I remember so, like losing my mind because it was like around the same time as like the NBA finals and the Warriors yeah. were in it. So like everyone was just in like a good mood and like cheering at their desk or whatever. Uh, so I, I got away with it, even though I was screaming about video games. I remember I had come up to Seth and Elijah's for E3 because we used to get together every year and watch like all the conferences together, except for Nintendo, because they always had theirs like way later after everybody else on a separate day. And so. I was flying back home and I remember I was sitting in the airport watching the direct, like waiting for my flight and just sitting there like so excited just in silence at the airport. So (laughs) I I don't think people are going to be excited for it when it drops, you know, I mean like, yeah, five years. I mean, I gotta be honest at this point. Look, I love Metroid prime, but I would almost prefer, prefer more of what they did with dread. Yes. Dread was flawless. Like I, I think Dread, aside from Breath of the Wild, it's probably the best game on the Switch, and I, I would love to see more of that. I would prefer, honestly, at this point, I would just prefer like a Metroid Prime trilogy than True. a Metroid Prime Four. Like, cool things end, people die. Your favorite TV show has a finale. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, things end. We don't need Metroid Prime in perpetuity. We've got three pretty good games we got one excellent game i think that first game is like borderline perfect in that trilogy two is fine three kind of gets some of it back but god i just hate those motion controls like honestly just release those and be like hey we were really great once and and just move on like just do do something else but the thing is if you have a laptop or a computer that can really run the dolphin emulator playing metroid prime on there is it it's just so crisp and clear and I didn't put any patches on it. I just, I think I did, uh, I changed the hub. I think that was it, but it just looks like you don't have to, you could do the remaster, like what, uh, Twilight princess did for the Wii U. And it's going to look phenomenal on the switch, you know, if they were to go that route, but, uh, but it's, it's accessible. It's out there. It's easy to get and play, but I get it. The motion co- controls. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, the only th- game I think that is the best way to play it is Pikmin, you know, is with the motion controls. But um, yeah, I just want to know what retro studios, where they're at with it. You know, are they looking for 2024, 2025? Yeah. Are, are they okay? Like, it's like a friend who just like stops texting you. You know, like, oh, we, like used to we meet got up. ghosted. Yeah. Yeah. We used to meet up all the time, man. Like he used to come to like softball and stuff. Like, what's up? He's like, oh, no, I'm just busy. You know, <laughs> it's like, cool. But like, we, we miss you. Like, we'd love to see you. You know, that's retro right now. The yeah. other thing I'll say about the direct and then we can jump uh, onto the state of play is. And I'm not saying this to be insensitive, but they delayed originally the um, Advanced Wars remakes one and two because of the situation in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that started what in February, February. Yeah. And it's now September and we still have heard nothing. And those games were like weeks away from releasing. I want to say we were within like a month of release. So they didn't acknowledge them at all. I'm really curious what their plan is with those games moving forward. So just interesting to to see them disappeared. <laughs> but 
like I said, I, I I do understand where they're coming from. It's just to an extent, I I almost wonder when. I mean, you you've got to release it at some point to be kind of financially um, stable in a way. Yeah, I would think. Solvent. Yeah. Yeah. But so, I don't think that's a million seller though. That's true. That's true. I don't, so. I don't know. People show up for Nintendo on Switch these days. Yeah, it's true. You're right. All right, so let's hop over to State of Play now, and we'll do the same thing. I'll kind of run through the games after, but just overall, briefly, what did you guys think of the, the State of Play? I, I thought it was pretty decent. I loved literally everything I saw in this. Well, not everything. There's one game I could just scrub out from existence. But oh, yeah. uh, every, oh, sure. everything everything I saw is just like, holy crap, that's awesome. But like nothing is coming out this year, right? Like they God of War, they show God of War because it's like, that's the only thing they have coming out this year. They showed one game that's yeah. not releasing until 2024. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> like, dude, when I saw that pop up, I was watching the trailer and we'll talk about it in a moment. But I was watching that trailer. and I was like, oh, this looks good. 2024. God, why? Yeah. Why even show it? <laughs> it's Lucy with the football. So, coach, did you watch the state of play? I did. I quickly went through it. The, the biggest thing that caught my eye was that controller. <laughs> that was like to me that's what i got out of it the most was like okay very I'm gonna good try and get that tro- controller yeah i thought it was good overall i had the same issue as george though i i think the lack of kind of games coming soon was very disappointing aside from god of war and um, we're we we have uh spider-man coming out next year supposedly right mm-hmm. and nothing nothing supposedly i and we'll talk about it I think we can talk about it a little bit after, but I'm, I don't know what Sony's plan is right now. Like, are they just purposely trying not to show much or do they really just not have much of anything on the way? Um, cause after God of war, I mean, we know Spider-Man's coming, but I don't know if I believe that's going to be next year, to be honest with you, or if it is, it'll be way late next year. I, I mean, believe, what I believe it is because Spider-Man was 20, 2018. Yeah, that's true. We got two teams, so the other team was doing the Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Yeah, but now it's like, okay, so is the Rift Apart team doing Wolverine? That's true. That's a good question. And like, obviously, like you know, we, we I was giving hell to Nintendo, like in all honesty, like COVID really threw a monkey wrench in, into all things. You yeah. Know? So like, I assume if things went on sort of unimpeded, we would have gotten Tears of the Kingdom a year and a half ago, right? Maybe. Yeah. A year ago right um and so same thing with with these games which like okay like the the ink is dried on the deal so we can talk about it let's throw something together just like build hype build goodwill but i wouldn't be surprised especially because like it seemed like god of war was like a rumor to come out this year until all of a sudden it was confirmed to, to come out this year you know that is true so okay let's talk about some of these games then they started off with tekken 8 hell yeah which I thought was pretty cool. I've never been a big fighting game fan, but I do like the Tekken Soul Calibur style of of all the fighting games I've played. Those are the ones I enjoy the most. So I thought that was a pretty pretty awesome announcement. That game was so pretty. Like the way I buy car sim games, even though I don't really care about like modern car sims, I do it because like, oh my God, this is like drool worthy. That game looked so pretty. Like that wasn't a cinematic. That was like an actual fight that was happening like in a lightning storm on top of a cliffside. Like it just looked incredible. And then they jumped into two VR games, which I thought both looked pretty good. One being Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Enhanced Edition, which Mm -hmm. has been out on Oculus, I want to say for like a year and a half, two years or so. It runs like Bud on Oculus. Yeah, I've heard it's decent, but I heard it was not as good as um, Vader Immortal. So I'll be curious to see how it runs and what people think when it comes to PSVR 2. And then the bigger one for me and Coach... We played this game together, I think. Yes. Demio. I was going to say, I thought we had played it together. Demio. We played it, with, um, it was me, you, Seth, and uh, Ray. Yes. Ray Apollo. That was like the Twitch. funnest two hours yeah. that I had doing co op. Like, yeah. it was a blast. It was like, it was an experience that I won't forget, right? It's one we need of those to go games, back and play it. I know. We keep saying that, but yeah. We need to, get, <laughs> we need to try and get Ray on and see. Yeah. So Demio, I thought this was a fantastic announcement. Demio is probably, aside from 
Beat Saber, like one of the best VR games out there. It's essentially, it's like a scaled down D&D. Like it's a more simplified D&D where you've got like cards that you use, but it still has like the board set up. And um, you're you're like all in VR, like sitting down in this little like basement, like the Stranger yeah. Things kids playing playing this this D and D game together, and you can all see each other. You can see each other's heads and like your, where your hands are, and um, it's a fantastic game. And now I really do want to play more because it's so good. But the best thing for me was they announced that they pretty much this was just hey, it's in development for PSVR two. But afterwards, they announced it has crossplay, which is huge because this is really going to grow that community. You know, you'll be able to play with people on PC, on Oculus, on PSVR 2. And they also announced, I don't know that I would play it this way, but they also announced you don't need VR to play this on PS5. So you can still play it, you know, just standard on your your TV. I mean, the one kid, the one kid that (laughs) doesn't have PSVR. (laughs) Well, that game, Trevor Saves Universe, I think we talked about this recently, too. Like, that game was, like, you know, made for PlayStation VR. I think that game is great in VR. But my buddy Colin didn't have VR. Yeah, it's a good point. I I just lent him the disc, and, like, he loved it, you know, without it being, like, you know, the cool, nifty gimmick of, of virtual reality. Plus, like, I've... Someone shared with us today, I think it was Elijah, it was it that Eurogamer article about like it was some producer? Was it Eurogamer or Game Informer? I I can't recall. Okay, one of those two. Search Eurogamer, uh, Game Informer, PSVR two. Some producer got to spend like a, a lot of time with PSVR two today, and he was just like blown away. And uh, gosh darn man, I'm really excited for that system. Do you guys care at all? Well, I was going to ask the same question. Are you guys thinking about getting PSVR 2? I'm getting more excited for it. I think it depends on the price, though. Like, it's it's good to see all these games coming to it, all the stuff that they've announced. That was my big complaint with the first one, was it kind of felt like we were just getting the scraps from, like, PC. But now it seems like we've actually got a lot of big stuff on the way. They just announced the, what is it, Fire Firewall? That, that big game that was on the first... PSVR, yeah. the shooter, multiplayer shooter, they announced, I don't know if it's a second one or an, or like an upgraded version for the first one, but that's coming, which is huge. And then these two games, I mean, Demio alone is a, is a huge deal. Yeah. So. And it's yeah. not graphic intense. So whether you have, um, like, I just have the regular Oculus Quest, right? So whether you played on the first one or the, the Oculus Quest 2 or PSVR, you're still going to have a blast with it, right? Next, they went into another really cool announcement, Like a Dragon Ishin, which is, um, it's actually, a, it's what was a Yakuza game, and now they're calling that series Like a Dragon. They announced that today, actually. Um, so moving forward, all those games will be, they'll go by the, the Like a Dragon kind of title. God, it's such a cool name. <laughs> it, it is. It's a very cool name. But this has actually been out in Japan for a while. It's like a a mid 1800s yakuza style game where you're going around as like a samurai and it's still got the similar like beat 'em up gameplay it's a spin-off and i i'm really curious about this game because i i really want to get into the yakuza franchise i guess now the like a dragon franchise there's just too many games to play but this one at least is a spin-off so you can get into it without playing the others mm-hmm. which i'm far more interested in so pretty cool stuff there Hogwarts Legacy, they showed off a PlayStation exclusive class quest. Frankly, really don't care about that game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pacific remember, Drive. Remember, oh, go remember ahead, when uh, it was rumored that uh, Rocksteady was going to be their game that they were that. doing? Was it RPG? Uh, yes. Hog- yeah, Harry Potter. I forgot about that. That's crazy. And now it's the team. Isn't this the team that did Disney Infinity? I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, poor key. So, yeah. Uh, Pacific Drive. This was a big surprise for me. I, I've never even heard of this this studio, Ironwood Studios. Apparently, it's their first game. It looks awesome. I don't even know what I watched, but it's just like you're driving around in this little car and the world is ending around you. I'm so interested in this one. 
Yeah, it had a really fun vibes to it. I mean, not fun because it looked like an absolute nightmare world they were in. But uh, like for a video game that's not real, hell yeah, I'm I'm in for that. Yep. They talked about the PlayStation Stars program a little bit, which frankly I I don't really care about. At first, I was worried they were going to say it's like NFTs. I mean, it is like know. NFTs, right? Like yeah. they, they were saying, like you'll get like special digital prizes if you're like the first person to platinum a game. Which, like, okay, but, like, that's really no different than, like, getting a platinum trophy with a timestamp before anyone else. Like, trophies are NFTs, right? Like, they're just, yeah. you just can't buy them, except you also, have to buy them because video are, games aren't free. Yeah. Are all the IGN employees, like, going to load up on all these trophies then? Like, that's what I, I'd love oh, to know. Because wow. <laughs> they'll have access to these games long before. That's a great question. So, anyway. Sin Duality. This was, if I'm not mistaken, this was the mech game from was it from square enix or no it was bandai i'm very interested in this game it looks at first i was thinking maybe this is um uh a new near game no the 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 series that from software used to make um armored core yeah armor core i was thinking maybe this is a new take on armor core as as they showed some gameplay and it, it looks pretty similar so i'm excited for that one and then Stellar Blade, that is what used to be called Project Eve, coming from a Korean studio. Looks somewhat similar to like a Bayonetta style kind of hack and slash. I'm not super interested in that one, but it looks pretty good. Like I thought all these games, to be honest, like looked great. You know, like it was just all yes. really interesting stuff. Like the same way like First Spoken was shown off, and then oh god, the game awards. There was that other game with it looked like a a Bayonetta adjacent game where it's like some woman in like green armor and she had like a giant like almost like witchblade style armor and she you know had like a giant knife or whatever yeah i can't remember what it's called either miss elijah he would he would know exactly what i'm talking about um like they all look like fun and like they actually look next gen but it's also like bro i've had my playstation 3 for like or place wow playstation 5 sorry i've had my playstation 5 for almost three years now two years how 2020 right yeah, two years. Yeah, so it's like, all right, man, where's where, where's these games I've heard so much about? <laughs> <laughs> and then, let's see, they had two more things they showed off. They showed off Rise of the Ronin, which is a new Team Ninja game. Mm-hmm. That was the one that they showed off, and they were like, oh, by the way, 2024. Yeah. So that instantly just, it looked good, but I don't care right now. Call, call me in two years. I thought it was a Ghost <laughs> of Tsushima game. Like, this feels yeah. like... Uh, drive club uh, Gran Turismo <laughs> thing, right? Where it's just like, you know, you guys got two games that occupy uh, pretty similar spaces. <laughs> and then they wrapped up the showcase with, I mean, just kind of objectively, probably the, the most exciting moment for everybody, which was the new God of War trailer and that God of War Ragnarok controller for PS5. And um, first off, I think the controller looks excellent. I agree with you, coach. Very excited for that. Probably going to buy it. <laughs> I love the blue and white color, and I love the 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 uh, wolves that are on like the touchpad. Thought that was pretty neat. And secondly, that trailer is phenomenal, and that's exactly what I needed to see. I mean, I was going to buy this game day one either way, but we haven't really seen too much like gameplay wise, in game cinematic wise, and that was all I needed. The shot where Atreus is shooting the, bo- yes, the bow, I was just gonna say the that. sun, and yep. like just the way that the screen transitions, that is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a game. Jaw dropping, to say the least. Like, honestly. Yes. And that's so, the and, power of the PS5, you know? So it is. Well, and Gene Park from the Washington Post, he was tweeting out something earlier about how. You know, maybe that's kind of a new mechanic in in God of War, almost in vain to the stuff in Ratchet and Clank, where it was like going through the por- the portals and yeah. your world would change. And they made that big deal about how that could only be done with the SSD. I don't know what mechanic that'll be in the game with like the the sun and stuff, but I thought that was pretty neat the way it transitioned. So very excited for that game. That is that is my most anticipated game right now. I cannot wait for November 9th. <laughs> So, George, are you excited at all for, for God of War Ragnarok? I never finished the first one. I probably should go back and do that. There's just there's so many games, you know, and like I'm playing Strange Brigade like an idiot two years after it came out. 
I would love to go back and do Breath of the Wild in time for Breath of the Wild 2, but like, I'm, oh, I've got plenty of time. You know, that game comes out in May. I know I'm going to drop the ball there, too. And yep. I'm sitting here thinking like, oh, shoot, it's September 14th. You could you totally have enough time to play through God of War. I want to. Am I going to? That's uh, two, two very different things. <laughs> well, cool. There that is. All right. And we'll wrap it up there. So I appreciate everybody listening some good showcases this week and we hope to have more news like this every week because this is made for a fun episode so um of course you can find us all on social media frames frame skip itself is on social media at frame skip pod we're each individually on twitter i am at austin j eller george is at purplebird 616 that's also where you can find his podcast short box summary and then seth is that seth the 90s kid coach is not on twitter he is just on earth on earth riding my bike <laughs> getting ready for my first bike packing trip fun times fun times yes. we'll listen to the frame skip podcast while you're going bike packing what <laughs> <laughs> wait <So. what>? <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well thank you all for listening and we'll join you next week peace